Hello, this is Reza from Red Acad, and I'm going to take you through all the Power BI announcement in Microsoft Business Application Summit 2021 in one video. Let's check them out. Before talking about announcement, I'm uh, super humbled to receive the Microsoft Fast Track Recognized Solution Architect Award for Power Platform, Power BI Area, uh, mentioned by James Philip at the keynote of Power BI uh, Microsoft Business Application Summit 2021. And I thank you all uh, people who read my blogs and watch my videos. That gives me energy to do what I do. Now jump into the, um, into the features and announcement. The first uh, announcement is Automated Insight, which is combined version of most of the AI capabilities in Power BI, uh, which instead of you go and pre-build those, they can be available for user easily just with a few clicks. You don't need to do anything with that. Automated Insight comes to Power BI later this year and users would be able to use it. Uh, another really interesting feature, which is released recently and you can use it already in Power BI is Power Automate inside Power BI. Uh, this is not just um, using Power Automate to refresh a Power BI uh, data set. This is more than that. You can, uh, with the trigger of Power BI button click, you can actually use some Power BI data to do some automation. There can be heaps of uh, powerful scenarios with that. This is a fantastic feature. I recommend everyone to go and check it out. Goals in Power BI is a quite big feature itself. This has itself a session, a whole uh, video and article to talk about, but basically it is a way to have scorecards, KPIs in Power BI. They are separate objects in Power BI. These are separate objects in Power BI that can be uh, defined, created uh, using uh, some definitions like a KPI with target, with status. You can specify dates for it. Uh, there are lots of sc scorecard settings for that. There's a fantastic session. I recommend everyone to go and watch it about uh, Power BI goals. Uh, and you can specify status rules for this. Um, and it is not just the goals and definitions and seeing that this can be also integrated with Power Automate. So you can make uh, actions based on those goals or make uh, goal oriented automation, which is a really fantastic, powerful features. Then these goals can be consumed by the users. There is a mobile experience of that goal as well, uh, which is quite powerful. I strongly suggest you to go and check it out. At the moment, this is available. If you want to check it out, you can try premium per user uh, trial and see how, the, how you can get this working. Power BI and HoloLens is a really fantastic feature. It looks like the uh, Iron Man feature of Power BI. Using HoloLens, you can see Power BI reports uh, in air pinned into different locations and see them. And this is not just for HoloLens, this experience extended actually to mobile. So you can use Power BI, uh, you can actually see Power BI reports pinned in different locations using mobile, which is a fantastic feature. Uh, uh, definitely recommend it to go and check it out. It's called Power BI Special Anchoring, and that is coming later this year into Power BI. Sparkline, uh, which is one of the most wanted features for Power BI. That is one of the new announcement. Bookmarks has been available in Power BI for a long time, but to set bookmarks, to use them, you needed to do a lot of things. You need to add, add the bookmarks, set the action for that, set the target for action, and that is just one bookmark. If you have like 10 pages you want to create, uh, bookmark navigations, you have to do 10 different settings. Using uh, the new versions of bookmarks, the navigation, the setup, everything is much easier and it is much more customizable uh, as well. Uh, paginated reports uh, can come as a visual for Power BI reports and this is coming soon, which means you will have paginated reports inside Power BI, which will 
take your visualization to the next level in Power BI. And uh, Power BI and Teams recently have really interesting uh, integration. They get better and better every day. Uh, we had Power BI in Teams already, but you can have Power BI in Teams meeting now for people who have access to that meeting to have access to that Power BI report. In a chat, in a Teams chat, you can share a Power BI report. Um, dataset Hub, which is a way to control and monitor uh, data sets with their labels, with their um, uh, with their certification labels and anything like that can be also monitored through Teams. Power BI apps can act like a team app and can be interacted using that like a normal team app. Uh, and this is uh, coming later this year to be able to deploy Power BI apps into Teams apps. Uh, Excel and Power BI works really well together. One of the things you can do is to get data from a Power BI dataset using Excel, which will bring a con um, consistent view across your visualization. Uh, Power BI and Excel both can connect to the same shared dataset. And Excel Online refresh of pivot tables is the new announcement, uh, which would make uh, the reports in Excel even much more useful. Uh, Power BI could have connect to SharePoint to build reports, but you can do it much easier now. You can, uh, from a SharePoint list, you can easily create a Power BI report directly called Quick Create. Very interesting feature. I encourage you to go and check out the uh, demo for it. Data sensitivity in Power BI is quite important, and Power BI can actually inherit or uh, uh, pass the data sensitivity from external sources, such as from Azure Synapse, you, it can get the data sensitivity labels. Um, and of course, data loss prevention policy is quite helpful um, in, in, uh, in the security settings of Power BI. Um, automatic, automatic aggregation, I think this is one of the very important features in terms of performance boost of Power BI reports. Using aggregation, you can performance boost Power BI report. You can make your Power BI report much faster, but you need to define aggregation tables. You need to define the settings for that. You need to control how the aggregation is defined based on the usage, create those aggregations. Now, automatic aggregation means that all of these can be done automatically, which is quite helpful. This means that uh, everyone now can go and build reports on top of massive data sets. You don't need a performance tuning expert to do that. Uh, and there's a query performance impact analysis, which helps you to have a what if analysis that what happens if you adjust the percentage of the cache used for queries uh, and what result you'll get. Hybrid tables is a new type of table uh, or partition, let's say, announced. There is not many details about that yet, but it is a very fantastic uh, thing uh, based on what uh, I have seen in the demos by Christian Wade, which is uh, ability to have part of your table import, part of it direct query real time, which means that you will have uh, the very fast performance report. On the other hand side, you may not need to refresh it because part of that, which is real time, is a direct query. Very interesting feature. Uh, I'm very interested to see how this is going to work. Now, automatic aggregation comes to Power BI later this year. Stay tuned for that. Uh, another really interesting feature, uh, which is one of my favorites, is streaming data flows. Power BI streaming data previously uh, wasn't really nice because you just pass the streaming data, you cannot clean it, everything, any, any cleaning you want to do, you have to do it before streaming it towards Power BI. But now using the streaming data flows, you can actually apply some Power Query transformation on top of the streaming data as it comes and make it clean, reusable, uh, which is really powerful. This is also coming to Power BI later this year. Uh, Power Query recently had a lot of uh, updates as well, and most of them are available at the moment, like Power Query Online Graphical Interface is really simple to use uh, and very helpful. 
the new diagram view mentioned um, in some blog articles and already available in Power Query Online is super helpful to find out how queries are built. You can even use it to apply some transformation steps. It gets easier and easier. I compare it with DAX, that DAX is still a big challenge for many Power BI users and developers versus Power Query gets easier and easier every day. Everyone can use it now, which is fantastic. Uh, this doesn't get only to the graphical part. You can see query plan using that uh, diagram view and the Power Query online, very helpful. Um, and there, uh, there are some features that announced recently, such as text CSV by example, uh, available at the moment in Power BI Desktop and coming in Power Query online. Uh, there's a, re a really nice roadmap of the features coming in Power Query experience. Definitely check them out. There's a session by Mahesh and Miguel from Power Query team. Very uh, amazing session. Go and check it out. Uh, at the end, there are a lot of features to cover in 10 minutes. I tried to just name those features. I highly recommend go and check these, check out these uh, six sessions to have an idea about uh, the new Power BI features or recent features and the roadmap coming. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, if you like this video, go ahead and subscribe into our YouTube channel. We have weekly videos of Power BI. Thank you.